Welcome to today's, today's presentation entitled Reporting Housing Inventory Count and Point in Time Count Data in HUD's HDX. Today's presenters will be William Snow from HUD SNAP's office, Tracy Dialano from Apt Associates, and Mark Silverbush from Apt Associates. After completing today's webinars, participants will be able to understand how to submit their housing inventory or HIC data, their point in time or PIT data into HUD's HDX. They will also be able to understand how to enter the required HIC and PIT count data by HUD's reporting deadline and how to access additional resources on HUD's 1CBD resource exchange. Before jumping into today's presentation, I just want to take a minute to thank you for all the hard work you've done. We recognize that doing point in time counts and the housing inventory count is a lot of work. And we recognize it comes at a time when you're dealing with several competing priorities. We at HUD recognize the work that you do. Not only do we recognize, but we appreciate it. And it goes a long way. We use this information in lobbying for more funding and hopefully to better serve you and the clients that you serve. Thank you for all the work that you do. Today's webinar will provide a broad overview of how to access HDX registration and login, the important HIC and PIT count data entry process and updates, how to enter and submit HIC data, and how to enter and submit PIT count data. While today's webinar will give you an overview of the HIC and PIT data entry process, please make sure to download the data submission guidance from HUD's 1CBD Resource Exchange, which provides more detailed instructions on how to submit this information. Additionally, we encourage you to return to the housing inventory count and point in time count data notice on data collection, which also provides very useful information about HUD's reporting and data collection requirements. All COCs must submit their HIC and PIC count data through HUD's HDX. COCs will be able to enter their HIC and PIC count data beginning Tuesday, April 1st, 2014, and this data will be required to be submitted by 12 a.m. midnight Eastern Daylight Time on April 30th, 2014. Submitting the HIC and PIC count data in HDX is a two-part submission. COCs must submit the, both the data entered into the HIC module and the data entered into the PIT module in the HDX by the submission deadlines in order for your submission to be considered complete. I will now turn the time over to Tracy Dialano to discuss how to access the HDX and how to submit your HIC submission data. Thank you, William. The HDX website has been enhanced to allow users easier access to creating and managing user accounts. In this section of the webinar, we will provide an overview of the process that COC primary contacts and users should use to create accounts, add new users, edit existing accounts, and assign user rights to the modules within HDX. Now we're going to cover accessing the HDX. A user account with a username and password is required to access the HDX. Once a user has an account, the COC primary contact can assign rights to the various modules within the HDX. The COC primary contact is the person listed in your most recent COC registration for the COC program competition or the person identified by the COC as the new primary contact through a written request submitted to HUD through the 1CPD Ask a Question page. Users and COC primary contacts should download the 2014 Data Submission Guidance document, which is currently posted on HUD's 1CPD Resource Exchange site to access detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to create accounts, edit accounts, add users, and assign access rights to the modules in HDX. Assigning rights in HDX. The COC primary contact 
should assign one of three levels of access rights to HDX modules for each user by checking the box that corresponds to the appropriate level of access. The levels of access in the HDX are read, write, and submit. If you have read access, you can see the screens and any data that has been entered, but you cannot enter or edit data. Those who have write access can enter and edit data, but cannot submit data. And those who have submit authority have the authority to approve and submit data as well as read and write access. Please note that individuals with write-only access will not be able to submit either the HIC or the PIC data. COC should make sure that the individual with submit rights is available to submit the data prior to the final deadline. Also note that there is a link in the last column of that page that the COC primary contact can use to remove users who should no longer have access to HDX. Please make sure that your current list of users is up to date and that individuals who should no longer have access to your COC's data in the HDX have been removed. So now we're going to go ahead and cover entering and submitting HIC data. Note that this webinar will not cover data collection. It is focused on navigating the HDX and how to enter data. For more information on what information needs to be submitted and how to collect such data, please make sure to download the CPD Notice on Data Collection. The Data Collection Notice and the Data Submission Guidance Document should be used together to assist your COC in submitting both the Housing Inventory Count and the Point in Time Count data in HDX. There are some critical updates that we want to go over. Three reporting requirements have been added to the HIC to better align program components with the COC program interim role. The first new reporting requirement is that rapid rehousing demonstration projects has been added in HDX as a specific project type. COCs that have one of the only 23 rapid rehousing demonstration projects that were funded in the fiscal year 2008 COC competition will need to identify the project type as DEM. If you are uploading CSV files from your HMIS system or copying your 2013 HIC data in HDX and you have one of the 23 rapid rehousing demonstration projects, you will need to update the project type in HDX to DEM in 2014. The second new reporting requirement is that a new project component, Permanent Housing, PH, has been added in HDX. Projects previously classified as Permanent Supportive Housing, or PSH, or Rapid Rehousing, RRH, will need to reclassify as Permanent Housing. And then the project subtype needs to be identified as Permanent Supportive Housing, Rapid Rehousing, or other permanent housing. The third new reporting requirement is that COCs will need to identify the number of beds within all project types that are dedicated to veterans and youth. This should be completed in the project inventory section of the inventory details page. For veteran bed inventory, report the number of beds that are dedicated to house homeless veterans and their families. A dedicated bed is a bed that must be filled by homeless veterans and their families unless there are no homeless veterans and their families located within the geographic area. The number of beds for veterans may be a subset of the total bed inventory for a given project and do not have to be associated with a veteran-specific project like SSVF or VASH. For youth bed inventory, report the number of beds that are dedicated to house homeless youth. A dedicated bed is a bed that must be filled by a homeless youth unless there are no homeless youth located within the geographic area. 
The number of beds for use may also be a subset of the total bed inventory for a given project. For example, a transitional housing project designed to serve both households with children and households with only children under 18. Additionally, when youth beds are reported, COCs will need to identify if the beds are dedicated to serve only children under 18, only persons 18 to 24, or persons up to 24. The up to 24 category includes both children under 18 and persons 18 to 24. If a project is intended to serve anyone up to 24, even if it has an earlier cutoff age, for example, 21, that project should indicate that it serves only persons 18 to 24 or persons up to 24, depending on the lower age limit of the persons in the beds dedicated to serve. Please note that you should only include beds in the households with only children category for beds that are dedicated to youth that are 17 and under. Now we're going to go over an overview of how the HIC data is organized. HIC data in the HDX is made up of three basic components, organization records, project records, and project inventory records. Organization records only have one characteristic, the organization name. In order to appear in the HIC, an organization must have at least one provider project, and a single organization may have many projects. Project records belong to an organization and have several characteristics, including the project name, the project type, the geo code, and target populations. Just as a project can have only one name, it can have only one project type, one geo code, and so on. A project must have at least one project inventory record, and it may have several project inventory records. Project inventory records belong to a project and include a number of data points about project beds and units, including inventory type, household type, bed and unit inventory, HMIS participating beds, as well as a pit count for the beds included in the project inventory record. The HIC module in the HDX is split up into tabs that are designed to help you enter organization, project, and project inventory data accurately. The HIC module includes six tabs on the secondary navigation bar. To access any one of the tabs, click on its name in the gray bar. Each of the tabs is described in detail in the 2014 HIC and PIT data submission guidance document. Please make sure to download the guidance document for step-by-step -step instructions. Note that the Organizations and Project tab is used to enter, enter information about the organizations and projects that provide homeless shelter and housing within your COC. The Inventory List section of the HDX allows users to see all the housing inventory and all the data associated with that inventory in a spreadsheet format. The Inventory Details tab is where you will enter specific bed and inventory information about each project. The Unmet Need tab is where you will enter unmet need data for your COC. Please remember that you must complete the Unmet Need tab before you will be able to submit your HIC data. The Reporting Status tab is where you will go to submit your HIC data, access report summaries, and see and link to validation errors and warnings. And finally, the Import Data tab allows you to either upload HICS data from your HMIS or to copy your previous HICS data so that you do not have to start from scratch each year. Please note that whether you are uploading HICS data from your HMIS or copying last year's data, you will still need to go through every project to update data elements and enter your pit count information for each project. So let's start with the Import Data tab. 
Duplicating the previous year's data or importing HIC data from your HMIS provides a starting point for completing the 2014 HIC. COC should carefully review each project and update as necessary to ensure that the data is correct and complete for this year's count. In addition to verifying bed and unit information and entering 2014 pit counts for each project, COC should pay close attention to the updated HIC requirements that may require updates or additions to copied or imported data, including project subtypes underneath the new permanent housing project component, for all projects indicating the number of beds that are dedicated to serving veterans and youth, and identifying age categories for any youth beds served. So let's go and take a look at the organizations and project sections of HDX. The organization and project tab is the starting point for managing organizations and project information. Note that there are two radio buttons, Organization View and Project View. If you want to see both the organizations and the project name, make sure to click on the Project View radio button. To add a project or organization, click on the blue Add Organization or Project button. To edit an organization, click on the name of the organization. To edit a project record, click on the project name. You can add a new project to an existing organization or create a new organization at the same time you create the project. But you cannot add an organization without also adding a project. Again, detailed instructions for editing Adding and editing organization and project information is available by downloading the 2014 HIC and PIT data submission guidance. When you click on the blue Add Organization or Project button on the Organizations and Project page, this will bring up a screen where you can enter organization and project information. Remember to click the Save button on the lower right corner of the page. After you have added or edited an organization or project, you will need to visit the Inventory Details tab to enter the bed and unit information about the project. On this page, make sure to enter the organization name, the project name, the status, if the project should appear in this year's HIC, select Active. If the project has closed or is no longer active, click Close. Enter the project type, the geocode, the optional target population data, and target population B data. Note that veterans have been removed as a choice from target population B since you will now be reporting the total number of veteran beds on the inventory details page. Also note whether the project receives McKinney-Vento funding, and you may enter address information, which is optional. However, note that if you are a domestic violence project, that project should not have address information entered into HDX. Now let's take a look at the HIC inventory list page. The inventory list provides a complete list of your COC's inventory. Make sure that you click on the Set Date link to enter the date of your housing inventory count if you haven't already entered the date from the Import Data tab. New this year, the date you conducted your housing inventory count and the date you conducted your PIT should be the same. If you did not conduct your PIT and your HIC on the same date, please leave a note of explanation on the Notes tab in the PIT module. The inventory list also allows you to search and filter your inventory to help you find organizations and projects faster. You can search and filter your inventory based on an organization or project name, the inventory, inventory year, and or the project type. You can choose which columns you would like displayed, you can sort the list by any of the columns by clicking on the column header. You can filter the list of inventory by year or by project type. You may delete a project record, and you can export your housing inventory data to Excel. 
Note that the export will be in a CSV format. Just save it as an Excel document. If you click on the Add Organization or Project button on this tab, it will take you to a form on the Organizations and Projects tab where you can create a new project. If you click on the Projects name on this tab, it will take you directly to the Inventory Details tab for that project where you can then add and edit project bed and unit inventory data. Next, we'll look at the Project Inventory Details page. Use the Inventory Details tab to record bed and unit information that belongs to a project. It includes a number of data points about project beds and units, including the inventory type, the bed type, whether or not the beds are for households with children, households without children, or households with only children, the total bed and unit inventory, the number of HMIS participating beds, the number of veterans and youth beds, and the youth age categories. Note that which fields are required for an inventory details record depends upon the project type. In this example, the project type is emergency shelter, so specifying a bed type is required. In addition, CSUs can record information about any seasonal and or overflow beds. We're going to talk about the pit count on the HIP now, and in order to determine project bed utilization rates, every project on the HIC will need to include a count of the number of people utilizing the beds in this project on the night of the COC's HIC and pit count. Prior to entering a project pit count, the pit count date needs to be set in the pit module. If the pit count date has not yet been set, you or someone with right access to the PIT module will have to set it. To do this, click the set date. To do this, click the set date link in the dark blue box on the bottom of the right of the page. The set date link will take you to the PIT counts module where you can enter the date of your PIT count and save. The system will then automatically take you back to the inventory details page in the HIC module where you can finish entering the data and saving the record. Note that the total number of sheltered persons counted on the HIC must equal the total number of sheltered persons counted on the PIT. For example, total persons in emergency shelter, transitional housing, and safe havens. Any discrepancies between the number of sheltered persons counted on the HIC and the number of sheltered persons counted on the PIT will result in a validation error, requiring the COC to fix the error prior to being able to submit data. The Unmet Need page. All COCs are required to complete and submit estimated unmet need data for their COC. COCs can access the Unmet Need Data tab by clicking on the tab in the gray toolbar. Every cell on the Unmet Need Data tab requires that a value be entered. If the value is zero, enter zero. For further guidance on calculating Unmet Need, please find and download from the HUD Resource Exchange the Calculating Unmet Need for Homeless Individuals and Families Guide. This tab, again, must be completed before you will be able to submit your HICS data. Validation warnings and errors. The HDX will display validation warnings and errors to assist you in identifying and addressing any inconsistencies in your HIC data. The validation errors and warnings will be shown on the inventory details page and can also be viewed on the reporting status page. A validation error must be corrected before the HDX will permit you to submit your data. Any form that has a validation warning should also include a note of explanation in its notes box. Submitting HIC data. HIC data must be submitted to HUD in the HDX by midnight Eastern Daylight, daylight Time on Wednesday, April 30, 2014. 
To submit HICS data, click on the Reporting Status tab on the gray toolbar. If you have any validation errors or unexplained warnings, the Submit Data button will be light gray and you will not be able to click it until any errors have been corrected and or there are notes to explain any warnings. If you do not have Submit Authority, you will not be able to see the Submit button and you will need to contact your COC primary contact to either submit the data or provide you with Submit rights. If your HIC data is error free, the Submit Data button will be blue. Click it to submit your HIC data to HUD. Remember, submitting the HIC and the PIC data in HDX is a two-part submission process. COCs must submit both the data entered in the HIC module and the data entered in the PIT module from each module's reporting status page by the submission deadline in order for your submission to be considered complete. So now we're going to go over to Mark, who's going to provide you an overview of entering and submitting PIT count data. Thanks, Tracy. Now we're going to review the basics of PIT count reporting, what's new in 2014, and the structure of the PIT module. I'll start with an overview of the major changes. Overall, four new PIT reporting requirements have been added for 2014. The first reporting requirement is that COCs must report race, ethnicity, and gender data at the homeless population level for all persons counted. As in prior years, COCs must collect and report information on three household types. As you can see at the top of the screen, each household type is reported on a separate tab, and there are three household types. Persons in households with at least one adult and one child, persons in households without any children, persons in households with only children. The final tab is the homeless population's total tab, which is auto-calculated as a sum from the three household types. We'll go over the details about who fits into each of these household types in a few slides. The second new reporting requirement is that COCs are required to report population data for veteran households. As a result of this new requirement, reporting requirements at the veteran subpopulation level have been eliminated. COCs enter their data on the number of veterans, number of veteran households, as well as the demographic characteristics of veterans enumerated during the pit count. As you can see on this slide, which is for veteran households with at least one adult and one child, next to gender, in parentheses, it says veterans only. This is a reminder that all veteran demographic data reported to HUD should be limited to data about the veterans only and not about non-veteran household members. COCs must report on two veteran household types uh, in each tab. They include persons in households with at least one adult and one child and persons in households without children. Next, there are updates on the subpopulation page to revise the naming convention of chronic substance abuse and severely mentally ill. They have been switched to adults with chronic substance use disorder and adults with a serious mental illness. Also, the sum total number of persons reported in your COC's emergency shelters, safe havens, and transitional housing projects in the pit fields of BHIC must match the total shelter persons in the pit count module. Okay, now we're going to get into the details of starting your pit data reporting on HDX. Begin by selecting the blue new count button shown in the top left corner of your screen. Prior to entering pit population and subpopulation data, you must provide some background information on your COC's count. This includes the date that your COC has conducted the pit count in the upper left portion of the module, the type of pit count that was conducted in 2014, whether it was a sheltered and unsheltered count or a sheltered only count. If the COC conducted a count outside of the last 10 days of January, 
indicate whether a waiver was provided by HUD or not. The waiver question will only appear if a point in time count date outside of the last 10 days of January is entered. Looking at the PIT data overview, uh, the module, it has four basic components. Homeless populations, homeless subpopulation, veteran populations, and methodology. Homeless populations include the persons and households counted and their demographic characteristics by household type. Homeless subpopulations include the total number of chronic homeless individuals and families with subpopulation data on adults with serious mental illness, substance use disorders, HIV AIDS, and victims of domestic violence. That last one is optional. Veteran populations include the total veteran persons, veteran households, as well as demographic characteristics of veterans by household type. And lastly, the methodology includes details about how your continuum of care conducted the point in time count. Navigating the PIT count module. The PIT module includes seven links on the secondary navigation bar. To access one of the links, simply click on its name in the gray navigation bar. The second link in the PIT module is for reporting homeless populations. COCs should enter their data on the number of persons and households by household type enumerated during the PIT count. The data should include veterans as well, even though you will report veteran-specific data in another section. The veterans data is a subset of the total homeless population data. As in previous years, COCs must collect and report information for the following three household types. Persons in households with at least one adult and one child, persons in households without children. This includes single adults, adult couples, with no children and groups of adults, as well as household, persons in households with only children. This category includes persons under 17, including children in one-child households, adolescent parents and their children, adolescent siblings, or other household configurations composed of only children. For households with at least one adult and one child, and households without children, COCs must report the total number of households. For households with only children, COCs must report both the number of one-child households as well as the number of multi-child households. Subpopulation data is the third link in the PIT module. COCs must enter data on the number of sheltered and unsheltered persons in each of the following categories. Chronic homeless individuals, chronically homeless families, persons in chronically homeless families, adults with a serious mental illness, adults with a substance abuse disorder, adults with HIV AIDS, and optionally, victims of domestic violence. Again, only adults should be used in this chart uh, except in the total number of persons in chronically homeless families. Please make sure to click the blue Save button in either the top or bottom right-hand corner of the screen to ensure that the data is saved in HDX. The fourth link in the PIT module is for reporting on veteran populations. COCs should enter their data on the number of veterans, veteran, pop, veteran households, persons in veteran households, and the demographic characteristics of veterans enumerated in the PIT count. As stated earlier, you should report on all persons in homeless population, including veterans, whereas the veteran population section will be limited to information about veterans and their household members. Next is methodology, the fifth link in the PIT module. It's divided into five subtabs. Tabs one and two focus on the methodology your COC used to conduct, to conduct a count of sheltered homeless persons. Tabs three and four focus on identifying the methodology that your COC used 
in conducting a count of unsheltered homeless persons. Tab 5 asks you to compare your 2014 count to the previous count, if applicable. You will not be able to complete the two unsheltered tabs if you did not indicate that an unsheltered count was done in 2014. Please download the 2014 HIC and PIT data submission and guidance document for more detailed instructions about the methodology section. Next, the sixth link in the PIT module is the notes section. CUC should enter any information they think might be relevant to help HUD staff better understand the data submitted. This space should also be used to explain any validation warnings that remain at the time data are submitted. Submitting the PIT count. PIT count data must be submitted to HUD by midnight Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Pacific Time, on Wednesday, April 30th, 2014. To submit PIT data, click on the Reporting Status tab of the gray toolbar within the PIT module. If you have any validation errors or unexplained warnings, the Submit Data button will be in light gray and you will be unable to submit the data. If your PIT data is error-free, and your warnings are explained, the Submit Data button in the top right-hand corner will be blue, and you will be able to submit your data to HUD. A quick reminder on Submit Authority. Make sure that submit rights are assigned to the correct person in advance of the deadline. And now I'm gonna turn it back over to William Snow to talk about the HUD online resources. Thanks, Mark and Tracy. I appreciate all of you as well for joining us today. Well, I want to remind you that HUD has posted several resources for your use, and we encourage you to read them, review them, and use them as you both collect and report, in this case, your HIC and PIT data. This slide highlights some of those resources, and there are others. If you go to your One CPD Resource Exchange page, you can seek assistance or information from the resource library or by accessing the One CPD News, you can also use the Ask a Question function to ask further questions of HUD. And finally, you can seek technical assistance. Thank you all for joining us today and have a great day. Wah, wah. I have right off. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.